The next inductee uh, falls under the category of civil service, and he's, he's taken a, a different flight path to all of us. Although he's in the same general category, uh, I don't think Al Sutherland has been flying F-18s or spectacular uh, in the air, but his career on the ground has been uh, quite spectacular. Uh, I, I actually would like to apologize to Al because, as some of you might know, I'm a lawyer, and I'd like to apologize that you have to work with lawyers a lot. Yes. Uh, because unfortunately, a lot of politicians are lawyers, so uh, I won't go on with the bottom feeding jokes and stuff. But, uh, Al is uh, an executive and policy planner w uh, with the Privy Council Office of the Canadian Government. I haven't got a clue what that really means, but uh, I know that he's influencing a lot of people, uh, and in his capacity uh, as executive policy planner, he's the guy that, let's call him the brains behind the politicians, because these are the people that put together the policy and keep our politicians I don't want to use the word straight and narrow, but give them the research and the, the knowledge that they require to go on and do what they appear to do easily. And it's, it's the people behind the scenes like Al that make it all possible. Al is uh, a graduate from the class of 83 here, so he was quite a bit after myself. And after leaving here, he went on to Queens and got a BA, uh, honors BA in arts. And then he went on to uh, John F. Kennedy School of Government at Harvard. Uh, you gotta be really smart to get into Harvard. Uh, so, unlike Keith, who is more the talented non-academic, we have this smart guy over here, right? So he went on to Harvard, uh, earned a master's in public policy, and uh, then he came back to join the Kennedy Public Service. Uh, and uh, we're likely better off because of that. He has helped uh, guide uh, Mr. Krejcian and Mr. Martin. Uh, he's helped uh, the Martin government with their transition. Uh, he also was right in the thick of things uh, at 9-11. Uh, you sometimes forget that uh, in times of crisis like that, our, our government has to take a position. We have to make statements, and we all follow it likely very closely on those hours after 9/11. And you know, our government, Mr. Krejcian, had to make some statements. Well, it's guys like Al that were furiously running around, sorting out what needed to be said and what was happening, and trying to put a, put some sense to it all. And uh, these people do incredible work. Uh, he has advised the clerk of the Privy Council. Uh, he's worked on the throne speeches uh, in 2002 and 2004. So if there was any uh, income tax amendments that you were hoping for, you can play <laughs> them now. Uh, and uh, he also uh, helped work uh, on the Federalist cause for the 1995 uh, Quebec referendum. So you have my, uh, my gratitude there. So because he has to help all these politicians all the time, naturally he, he lives in Ottawa. Uh, he lives with his wife Carrie, he's got two sons, Sam and Adam. And uh, I think Al is likely guilty of something I am, and that's talking about the good old days back in King, and um, I, I assume Kerry is not a King City graduate. No. no. <laughs> well, my wife isn't either, and uh, you can just see their eyes glaze over when you start talking about the good old days at King, but uh, I'm sure that uh, Al has many fond memories of this place, and um, now we know more about what Al did after he left the uh, basketball court and, and moved off to, uh, to live his life. And we, we owe him uh, and people like Al uh, in our government, uh, uh, our 
our debt of gratitude because they really do help make Canada a better place for all of us. So I'm happy to induct Al into our case. Actually, when I heard all this stuff about the Privy Council office and advising Martin and Kretchen, I actually thought that this uh, gathering would take place in the Vice uh, Principal's office, and I'd have to be accounting for a few of the things that have been done in recent years. But, uh, I'm not his only advisor. Um, those of you who know of me during my time at high school, and my time since then, this is my son Sam. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? <laughs> My wife, Carrie, and uh, my cousin, Ryan. There's my sister, Stacy, and Sarah. There's my mom, Mrs. Johnson. There's the number one rule of politics is always stack the audience. Uh, those of you who know me from my time in King City know that I never did anything alone, so I'd like. Uh, Chris and Greg can come up here. Drop the camera, Chris. Come on up here. What I'd like to do is start with something that we uh, used to do for kind of relaxation and fun, but which will be a lot harder now. Uh, guys, if you could get into the eighth position. <laughs> and it's battle to the side. <laughs> and back. Okay, I think that's about all we can manage. <laughs> That was something we used to do all the time in basketball. Uh, I don't remember it being that hard. Uh, but I remember it being a lot of fun. And it was a lot of fun because of friends like Chris and Greg that I met in my time at King. And it was fun because of the class of 83. So I'd like to start out by just thanking the class of 83 that made my time here at King so remarkable and special. And also I'd like to thank the... Uh, the teachers at King City, uh, I think uh, it was said well a bit earlier, but just the quality of education that we got at King. Um, you know, my marks went up when I went to university, which is, I think, a sign that they marked me way too hard. I was a bit about that. But I want to thank them because they prepared me so well. They sparked the career path that I chose. Um, Everyone, I think, that's come up to uh, receive thanks um, has said how they pursued their passion. Well, my passion got sparked really early. It got sparked by the history department. People like Mr. Henderson, Mr. Allen, Mr. Sinyard, um, they really inspired me to think about Canada, and think about Canada's place in the world. And that's really all I do. And I'm a bit like Oliver. I can't believe I get paid um, for doing this because it's, it's was a great fun when I was uh, here at King, and it's still a great fun now. Um, I have to confess that when I uh, when I came up, was coming up here, I kept saying to myself, "Really, you know, I'm not that old. I'm, I'm not that old. I'm not that old." And then I kind of walked around the halls and saw some of the pictures, and I can't believe I was really ever that young. So anyway, it's, uh, I want to thank the committee for. Uh, for thinking of me. It's nice to be remembered. Um, when Tom uh, emailed me at first and I said, ah, okay, I mean, if you'd like, sure, that sounds great. Um, it just sparked this flood of memories that's continuing uh, even now. There are a lot of ghosts walking the halls for me and a lot of uh, special, special memories have been inspired. Um, uh, it was mentioned that Folks didn't really know exactly what I did. Um, Tom uh, suggested I might say a few things about kind of what what I've been doing. And um, I'm with the priorities and planning, as as was mentioned before, uh, at the Privy Council office. We're the Prime Minister's advisors. It's nonpartisan. Um, at PCO, I've served Mulrooney and Campbell, and now I've, I'm serving Martin and did serve uh, Gretchen. And uh, that's my son again. <laughs> Always attentive. Um, and really, we do two things. We, uh, we work on the agenda. We work about and think about kind of Canada and its values and its place in the world and the directions it ought to take. And that's really about thinking about where you came from and your experiences and your, 
your sense of the country. And uh, once again, the debt I owe to the history department is enormous, and also to the King City community at large. It's a very caring community, and has, general, has definitely shown that to my family throughout time. Um, up to this year, I may that. Um, so we think a lot about the agenda and uh, the uh, place of, of Canada. Second thing we do is we serve cabinet. And uh, I often uh, think about what Mr. Sinyard or Mr. Ellison or Mr. Henderson would think of sitting at, behind that cabinet. It's like having a front seat of living history. And it's a special honor to do that and very privileged uh, to do it. But I've got more perspective on it because of some of the things that happened in some of the history classes that I took, um, the good grounding I got, and uh, so, well, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, I'd like to say a few things about King City community, and particularly the class of 1983. Um, it really provided a nurturing environment to me. Um, it was a time, and I'm sure Greg and Chris will agree, that you could, uh, it was a time to learn and to try new things and to, uh, you know, experiment, uh, try and decide. It's like putting on a different set of clothes, trying on different uh, ways of doing things. Um, actually, at a time when everyone was wearing red tag Levi's and uh, lumberjack shirts, apparently wearing designer jeans wasn't those, one of those things that you were allowed to do. <laughs> learned and Greg reminded me of um, <laughs> for about three years. Um, but it was a very caring community and it was really what public education is all about. Um, my wife, if she were here, um, would uh, tell you that a belief in the value and importance of public education is pretty much my core public policy belief. It's the thing I start with. And a lot of the reason for that is because of what I uh, my experience at King because I know it works and that it can make a difference uh, for everyone. Um, I'm not going to tell a lot of uh, kind of old jock stories. Um, my wife uh, warned me that uh, you know there are limits to her love and that uh, she doesn't want to hear them and only really Chris and Greg would hear them. And they always tell a slightly different version of events. <laughs> It was always, I will say a few things that maybe Chris and Greg would agree with, and that is it was a real joy to play for King City athletic teams. Of course, who wouldn't want to play on a King City team, a team that never lost, uh, always won, uh, and when victory was inevitable, um, you know, what's the downside? Um, I'd also like to say a few things uh, about... Uh, the last second scrap, I had planned to say a few things, or to develop some notes on the way down, but I spent all my time singing row, row, row your boat to my kids, so uh, apologies for being so scrambled. What, I mean, what you really learn in sports, and what I learned at King City Secondary School is like the concept of team, and it's really all those cliches that, you know, you, you win and lose together as a team, that there really is something called intestinal fortitude. Uh, not to Mr. Sargentson, you know, um, that, the that the only real leadership is leadership by example, and it's something that I maintain to this day. Uh, when, when I see our country's leaders, the best leadership is leadership by example. And then finally, that uh, if, if you're on a basketball team and your tallest player is no more than 6'2", what you learn is that that's the other team's problem. Because when they come into your gym, they better be ready to run. <laughs> so that's uh, something else. Um, I would like to thank again the history department, um, Canadian history, ancient history, uh, world revolutions, Canadian history again. I regret there wasn't a US history course. Uh, it forced me to take some expensive remedial classes in the States. Um, but it was lovely. I enjoyed every moment of it. And I guess if I were to sum up, I'd say that Teams may come and go, but teammates and coaches remain, and that courses come and go, but inspiring teachers and their lessons also remain. Thank you very much.